pardon my voice today, I think it's given up. And uh, congratulations, Sam, for this fantastic conference. Um, try to take up. Got some videos, so <coughs> right. So, um, how surrogacy impacts upon the lives of Indian surrogates and their families? Uh, as we all know, uh, commercial surrogacy is allowed in India, <coughs> and there has been a lot of debate uh, between commercial and altruistic and as we understand, uh, altruistic surrogacy is uh, the more common one in most parts of the world. India decided to go ahead with commercial surrogacy uh, based on certain arguments. Uh, I'm not going into the rights or wrongs of commercialism or altruistic surrogacy, but this is what the panel felt before allowing commercial surrogacy in the country. So I'm just going to spend about a minute on it and then go onto the topic where these ladies underwent surrogacy and how uh, they felt about it and why they did it and how it affected their lives. So before uh, commercial surrogacy was allowed, uh, a lot of the debate was taken from the American court and legislature where there was a point uh, where women did it for altruism and then suddenly uh, not backed off but thought they were cheated went to the court and there were certain arguments. Uh, some of them was, if a man can be paid for sperm donation, why can't a woman be paid for the services she's offering? Why should a woman always do things out of purity of heart? And stereotyping women as selfless, self-sacrificing only adds to the exploitation of women. If one wants to take benefit of women's reproductive capabilities, then not one should pay for it. Also, in altruistic, the repercussions of refusing to relinquish a child would be particularly painful. A woman with less power within the family can be physically, financially, or more probably emotionally coerced to assist an infertile relative. So we went ahead with commercial surrogacy in the country, allowing women to get some compensation for the services they offer to the infertile and unintended parents. There is also a blur between altruism and commercial. It is an arrangement that consists of payments for surrogates, medical travel, and other necessary expenses purely altruistic. The fact that the parties enter into a surrogacy agreement, which provides for payment to the surrogate's mother, does not necessarily mean that the motivation cannot be altruistic and vis-a-vis. -vis. Having said that, who would want to be interested in commercial surrogacy? Who would want to get paid for it? Definitely it would be from the strata of society who would be interested in increasing the standard of living. There's a lot of talk of India and commercial surrogacy and poor women being exploited for the same. Having said that, I think poverty is not nation specific. It is present in all countries, including where I am, the US, China, the African, but the percentage and the degrees vary. <coughs> so the desire to live better is irrespective of country, religion, or race. So I will now start with the story of Ria, who decided to do commercial surrogacy with us. She came from a lower middle class family. By lower middle class, we mean earning perhaps about between 100 to 300 US dollars a month. Can we get the voice please? It's in, in Hindi though. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this was Ria. Before going into commercial surrogacy, they were earning about 100 US dollars a month. It was difficult to meet the ends in a city like Delhi. And they had two children. One of them was smaller. The elder one was going to a local school, the standard of education of which she was unsatisfied. After the surrogacy uh, arrangement, which usually is between uh, 5,000 to 8,000 US dollars is what they receive. They are able to buy a small plot of, a plot of land which is close to the city. It's a future security and the boy is also going to a private school and getting better education. This is Rani. So again, this is a couple who have both decided to go ahead with this process. The husband has also given consent for the same. And the uh, factor that is coming across in all surrogates is not only themselves, they are concerned about the future, about their child, and better education and better standard of living. This was the story of Rani. And similarly, this is another very young couple uh, so there are no subtitles in this. In this, the couple wanted to do to start a very small business. The husband was not getting employment, and after this process, they started a small business. They're doing very well. They are happy and are looking forward to their own child now. So uh, this is another couple uh, who had undergone surrogacy with us and uh, came from the United States and have gone back happy after this. So essentially the bottom line here is it is not that these are women who, have, who do not know the process, who are being exploited and being used to serve the needs of the clinics, the doctors and the IPs. Even in India, when the surrogates are coming to us, they know what they're going through. They are going through a tough period. And more important than their own standard of living, they are concerned about their children, the future, and they're doing it. So in the end, if commercial surrogates is a fair way to benefit both the surrogate and the intended parents, provided the surrogate is well informed, well taken care of, and well compensated. Thank you very much. or interest in India to look at the long-term interest of all these surrogates as to, you know, what happened to them after the pregnancy? Are you aware of there any such interest to ensure that they indeed achieve what they set out to do by being surrogate and helping intended parents to, to do that? That's a very good question. The question was, are you aware of what the surrogates are doing uh, long-term after the service and how it has affected their lives? Uh, we have had bodies who are following the surrogate's family as well as the lady. Most important is the acute period post-delivery to see that they are healthy and back to their uh, usual life. Uh, as you know, it's a relatively short span of time that medical tourism and surrogacy has come to India in such a big way, maybe about five to ten years. So there are bodies who are following and we will see how they are doing to monitor. The ICMR, the Indian Council of Medical Research, itself has organized a research body to follow these ladies. One more question? If there's um, medical complications to the surrogate mother, um, I suppose once, once the baby's been handed over and um, returned back to Australia, 
what's in place to protect the health of the surrogate should there be complications going forward over a long period? The question is, uh, what if there are medical complications and what are the processes in place to take care of them? Uh, these surrogates are medically insured and uh, they follow up with the clinic and the doctor uh, at least for three to six months post the process. Thank you very much. Thank you.